lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim A lot of thoughts than you ever heard right, You can find me right. in the kitchen cooking hits I'm never missing uh-huh. all the hating is irrelevant So quit that sneak this okay. thing okay. It's kinda sick how I lay that hurt A spirit right. jitter when I spit I'm a flow right there Catch yeah. the beat off guard It's a gift so I'ma use it If I took five more I still never lose uh-huh. it And I got the industry like who is he Man of faith is a name Okay that's me You know. didn't know by now Well here's your introduction yeah. Shit this whole thing down Call it soul destruction I leave nothing left Pro game laid to wait uh-huh. You got a problem with it, you say it to my face While the race is so against it, and I hope it's the first That's right, right. through this thing, don't no catch me at my worst We headed to the top, never gonna stop We gon' light it up till it burn down And if you want to pop, step into the shop Nothing's gonna ever make us turn down You either up or you down Either way, we gon' always be around Here comes the main attraction uh, I call it faith in action Mr. Terrific, feeling awfully linguistic Here to paint another picture case you missed it Come on now, Jimmy, use your lipstick Been really feeling like a million bucks Tongue is double-edged sword to make a million cuts Through your defensive line, success is in my visual In my bloodline, and we some gifted individuals Expectations high, and we just can't stay invisible Do it all for the fam, the love is unconditional you Gotta push forward, put the worries in the past In the rear view, like we in person, they in last Tell the world to bring their giants, watch them be outplayed by the young David, slinging stones about the rag. Reaching for my dreams, I know they ain't too far to grab. I'm in pursuit of everything they said we never have. And when it's make it break, what we do, just pull it back. Cause if the throne is for the taking, then we throw it in the bag. We headed to the top, never gonna stop. We gon' light it up till it burn down. And if you wanna pop, step into the shop. Never gonna ever make a turn down. You either up or you down. Either way, we gon' always be around. Here comes the main attraction Uh, I call it faith in action To catch us in your city when we come to yeah, Run yeah. through, always giving you something to bump right, through right. And you can get in line if you want to There's enough shine for us all, you can get some okay. okay. Catch us in your city when we come through Run through, always giving you something to bump to And you can get in line if you want to There's enough shine for us all, come get some too We get it to the top, never gonna stop We gon' light it up till it burns down and if you want to pop, step into the shop Nothing's gonna ever make it turn down You either up or you down Either way, we gon' always be around Here comes the main attraction Uh, I call it faith in action That was that hypeness. Was that not the hypeness? That was the hypeness. <laughs> yes. Welcome to another Sunday with Nuts with Dre. And I'm telling you, it has been quite the week. I know I say it a lot, man. Matter of fact, I say it uh, quite often and quite possibly all the time. But you know what? I really do mean it this time. Not like I didn't mean it that last time or the time before that last time or that other time when I said, you know what, this is probably the last time. I missed you guys, and I'm so glad you took out just a brief moment of your time to join me for another Sunday with Nuts. It's your boy, Joy, and I'm telling you, with everything going on in the world, we just need to just get along. Wow. 
I will say, keep up the fight. Keep up the protest because I tell you what, our presence is powerful. But let's remember to do it in the right way, okay? All the looting, all the random acts of, of looting and, and violence, okay, that does not serve the purpose. Let's keep our focus, okay? Let's keep the focus on the prize. The prize is justice and equality. It's not for financial or petty gain, okay? Just thought I'd throw that out there. Let's tell you. I want to tell you right now, with everything that's going on, you know what? I think the biggest uh, misunderstanding is the misunderstanding. You know what? Uh, I've been in so many different areas, and and I've been to different countries. I've been to so many different states, and I've interacted with so many different people. And what I've come to find out is that through all my travels and my journeys and my interactions and my communications – uh, that you know what we are basically, we all are similar or alike in so many ways. It's just that we do things differently, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Because God created us all as individuals. Let me tell you something. This Sunday with Nuts is dedicated to the differences, yet similarities between. Black and white. Michael Jackson said it best in his song. If you think about being my brother, it don't matter if you're black or white. Here we go. Black and white. Different, but some similarities. First story I'd like to tell you about is, well, living or growing up in an all-black neighborhood. See, I'm going to tell you what. I, uh, I live here in Louisville, Kentucky, and I lived in an all-black neighborhood for several years. Matter of fact, uh, until about the last three months, lived in an all-black neighborhood until about the last three months. Um, then, we, of course, we had a, a white family move next door. Um, now, I'm not prejudiced, and you know I want to get along with any and everybody. You know, white man and his family moved into an all-black neighborhood three months ago. I work with open arms. I really did. But now what I realize is there are pros and cons when a white man moves his family into an all-black neighborhood. Pros and cons. Pro. White man moved into the all-black neighborhood three months ago. Immediately, he started a neighborhood watch. That's a pro. In-home burglaries are down 100%. Last three months, in-home burglaries are down 100%. That's a pro. Con, con, here's a con. The last three months, me and my family, we've had no secondary income. Think about that. You take the good with the bad. Black and white. Uh, different, but some similarities. Uh, I've been the uh, victim of racism, blatant, unadulterated racism. Uh, and this is another story of, of how racism can affect an attack out of nowhere. Uh, about five, six months ago, uh, I got a raise in my job. Uh, and so I, I was feeling good, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to treat myself to an expensive dinner at a high-class restaurant. Um uh, and you know how I know it was high class because, of course, they had a buffet. And so I decided I'm going to treat myself to uh, dinner at this high class buffet restaurant. And so I go in there, um, tell the uh, waitress that, um, you know, I'll have a uh, tea with uh, lemon, unsweetened, and uh, I'm going to have the buffet. So I go to the buffet uh, and I'm getting my food, uh, just getting food like everybody else. When all of a sudden I look around, I notice that I am the only person of color in the entire restaurant, yeah, in the entire establishment. It doesn't bother me now because, you know, I, I've been around white people before, okay? I'm not saying anything to anybody, waiting my turn, not pushing in front of anybody. I'm just getting food at the buffet. Like everybody else is getting food. When out of nowhere, out of the back, the manager, two wait staff come grab me, wrestle me, throw me out the front door to the ground. 
The manager comes and stands in the doorway, points his finger down towards my face and say, don't you ever come in this restaurant again. I don't want your kind in here no more. The way I was dressed? Was it the color of my skin? Was it my hair? Was it that big duffel bag that I was stuffing all that food into? Blatant, unadulterated racism. I've been a victim too, and I've tried to move on. I'll tell you what, uh, there's a department store. There is a department store here that I will never, ever, ever go into again. Never. Because they showed their hand to be racist. And the reason why I will never go in there again is because about three weeks ago, I had a very bad experience there. And I said then and there, when I left, (laughs) when I left, I looked at the manager and and I said, you know what? You don't have to worry about me coming in here ever again. I said, ever. Sir, you will never see me come in here again. I don't like the way y'all treat shoplifters. And you better believe me, I will never go and try and shoplift in there again. Racism, blatant, unadulterated racism. And these are just, again, these are stories that that, that, that show the, the, the true essence of how black people and white people are, are different but have similarities. For instance, um, you know what? I love everybody, and I love helping people because I'm a helper, you know. I'm a giver, okay. I like giving giving out to people and, and giving people a hand and doing good deeds. I'll, I'll give you an example of one of my good deeds. Um, two nights ago, I was coming home um, on I-65. I had a, a very long day and, and night of working, and you know what? I was tired. I, I was tired, and, and, and it was dark, and I just wanted to get home. But I was on I-65, headed home, um, about three and a half, maybe four miles from my house, when I saw a man on the side of the road with his thumb out hitchhiking. man happened to be white. I don't care if he's white, because my good deeds know no color. Now, it's late at night, and I, I figure I'll help him out and I'll give him a ride because there are all kind of crazy people out here, okay? Some of them are crazier than me. So I said, God, you know what? I know I'm tired. I want to get home. I said, but you know what? This man is out here, and he needs my help. This white man needs my help. I said, Lord, when he gets in his car, wherever he says take him, I don't care where it is, I'm going to take him. So I pulled over. The man gets in, closes the door. I look over at him. I say, sir, uh, where can I take you? Where are you headed? And this is what he said, y'all. He said, nowhere in particular, sir. You see, I'm homeless. Wow, good God almighty, homeless. That's that's a shame. So what I did is what I I, I did is I, I drove about 10 feet. I slammed on the brakes. I said, I believe this is you then. I, I, that made him a little mad, but I think what really hurt his feelings was when I stuck my hand out for some gas money. Needs to say I didn't get any. I just go to show you, no matter how you help people, sometimes they just don't appreciate it. But you got to move on. You got to move on because you know you did it from your heart. Okay, and that's what I did. From I gave from my heart. I tell you again, white people, black people. We, we're different, but we do have similarities. Now, let me tell you, I, this is, I had a dream. I, I had a dream uh, a few nights ago, and I'll tell you what, it was probably the most, no, not probably. It was absolutely the most beautiful, the most awesome dream I've ever had in my life. It was the perfect dream, I'd say. I had a beautiful black dream. I'll tell you how the dream went. Oh, my God. Um, I was at work, um, and I was uh, running my own company, and it was black-owned because I'm black. When I heard uh, some of my employees who were all black and some white, but mostly black, talking about 
this store uh, that they had visited uh, and talking about how awesome it was, especially my black employees, they said, hey, Mr. Ivory, you've got to go and see this store. You've got to go in here. It is the most beautiful, most awesome thing you'll ever see. This store is absolutely breathtaking. I said, wow. I said, if it's that good, I mean, if it's if it's all that, then yes, I'll go down my lunch break. So needless to say, uh, when my lunch break, when it came time for me to take a lunch, which I can take at any time, but I always take it around 1, one fifteen ish So my lunch time came, and I took my lunch break, and I, I they told me where the store was, and I, I put in my GPS, and I, I, I arrived in the parking lot, and I parked, and I, I got out of my uh, black Cadillac. Uh, with black leather interior and the windows tinted black, and I had on a black three-piece suit with a, a black Stacy Adams, a white shirt and a black tie. You know, you have to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> and so, as I get out and I'm walking to the store, and I get to the doors, and I look, and these doors are just like they're crystals and they're shining, and they're gold trim around the edges of the door. And I walk up in there automatic, and they automatically open, and I step in. And then what I see, oh, my God, was the most beautiful, most awesome sight I ever imagined. For in this store, they had all of these white people for sale. <sighs> I mean, they had the, the, the these high-priced white people hanging on the racks. And then they had this, these these shelved white people, and they were on sale 50% off. Then, of course, uh, they had some white people that were um, buy one, get one free. And then I noticed to the right of me that there was this pile of dirty, uh, disgusting-looking, ragged white folks, and they were on clearance. Well, I know a, a great deal when I see it, so I, I grabbed the arm of one of these little ragged, clearance white men, and I snatched him up. And holding on to him were 10 other people. And he said, wait a minute, sir, whatever you do, if you if you buy me, please, you've got to buy my whole family. It's me, my wife, and, and, and it's our, it's our, it, it's our nine kids, it's 11. I said, don't break up my family, please take me, my wife, and my nine kids, it's 11, please, please don't, don't break up my family. I said, well, come on, just everybody get in the cart. So I started helping them, stuffing them into that cart. And I'm walking around, and then I, I look at my watch, and even though I own this company, I still have to go back and go to work, okay? So I, I, I go to check out. I, I, I'm in line behind this other black person, and, and I'm, I look over to in the candy and, and come out while I'm waiting to, to be checked out. And, and I look, and I see some of my favorite magazines, Ebony, Essence. Oh, my goodness. And my favorite magazine, Die Whitey Die. <laughs> oh, wow. I love that one. I got to renew my subscription. But anyway, I'm looking at the magazine, and all of a sudden, uh, the cashier says, you're next, sir. And I go to push my carton forward, my cart forward, so I can check out. And all of a sudden, I look, and I say, oh. And I snatch the arm of this little white dingy baby. I snatch his arm, and I sit him on top of the gum. And the dad stands up in the car and says, please, sir, what are you doing? Please, you said you won't break us up. Please don't break up my family. It's me, my wife, and our nine kids. It's 11 of us. Please don't break us up. What are you doing? You gave me your words. You take all of us. And I looked at him. I said, you idiot. Can't you read? Look at the sign. This is the express lane. Ten items or less. And I Choked him by a stone and shoved him back down that car and I checked out. I tell you, folks, if I could dream that dream every night for the rest of my life, that would be a little piece of heaven on earth for me. Now, again, these are just stories to let you know. Black, whites, you know, uh, we're 
we're different, but we do have some similarities. And I'm sure white people have dreamed of uh, a dream where they can actually buy black people. Oh, that was a reality. Come back. Anyway, uh, also, let me tell you, uh, these children's stories that are out, of course, we all we all know some of the favorites, the three little pigs, the three Goldilocks and the three little bears. I mean, they're, they're, they're timeless classics. The story of Cinderella. Sleeping Beauty, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. I tell you what, one of my favorite stories of all time as a child was, of course, the story of Little Red Riding Hood. They told the Little Red Riding Hood, the, the little white girl who 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 packed, who mom packed a basket of goodies, so she took it over to her grandma through the forest, dangerous forest, all by herself, because she loved her granny who was sick so much. I got to thinking, you know what? What about Black Little Red Riding Hood? How would the story go? Hmm. So here we go. Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, Black Little Red Riding Hood. See, Black Little Red Riding Hood, uh, she was at home and playing outside when her mother says, Hey, Black Little Red Riding Hood, your grandma is sick. Yeah, Big Mama ain't feeling good, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make her some food and put it in a basket. I want you to take it over to her so she'll have something to eat, okay? Black Little Red Riding Hood said, I sure will, Mama, no problem. So Mama fixed the vittles and, 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 and packed them in the basket and gave it to Little Black Red Riding Hood. And, of course, she had a little, a little red hood. And then she had a little shorts and, and her little sandals, and she began to skip through the forest with her basket of goodies for her big mama. Well, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that big bad wolf jumped out. He looked at Black Little Red Riding Hood. He said, ooh, look at you, Black Little Red Riding Hood. Black Little Red Riding Hood said, uh-uh, geez. This is just for my big mama. She ain't feeling good, and I'm taking them to her so she can have something to eat. And my mama fixed them, and you can't have them. And that big bad wolf looked at Black Red Riding Hood and said, Oh, I ain't after no basket of goodies. I'm after your goodies. She said, What you mean, big bad wolf? Big bad wolf looked at Black Little Red Riding Hood and said, Oh, I've been watching Black Little Red Riding Hood. You show sure is growing up nice. Oh, black little red right hood. You know what I want to do? I just want to grab you and hold on to you and and and, 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 and hug and squeeze you and, and throw you down and kiss you all over, black little red right hood. I want to make sweet love to you, black red right hood. Black little red right hood took a step back, looked at that big bad wolf up and down and said, oh, no, you're not. I don't know who you think you're dealing with. Huh. You ain't finna kiss all over me. Hug and squeeze on me, throw me down and kiss all over me and make no sweet love to me, Mr. Big Bad Wolf. Uh-uh. No, you going to eat me just like the book say. What the? Uh, next story. Uh, black people and white people uh, alike, but a little different. I'll move right along. Uh Look here now. This 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 story here. Uh, again, black people and white people. You know, we are similar. We, we we do have some similarities. We just we different, and we 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 react to similar situations a little differently. Uh, and this is a true story almost. Uh, but I'll tell you what happened. Uh, back in uh, two thousand and ten, that was a situation where. Um, you know, I had some financial situation that, that was not good or positive. And so um, because of my financial situation not being good or positive, uh, you know, certain bills went unpaid and my lights were shut off. Now, you know, I had a family at the time, so naturally, you know, uh, it's up to me to go and see what I can do to work this thing out to get the lights turned back on. So I got to come back a hero, you know. So I set out. When I go to the um, the, the the light place, the electric place, and, and, and so uh, lg and is what it was called, Louisville Gas and Electric. So I went down to lg and uh, you know, I, I don't know if anybody experienced this, but when your lights are turned off, you can't just, you know, um, 
go there and and, 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 st- and and go up to the counter. Now you got to uh, pick a number and wait in line, and you got to talk to what they call a customer service representative. Okay, you got to sit down at a desk and talk to them. Okay, and so I'm in line and uh, I'm waiting and uh, waiting for my name to be uh, my number to be called. Uh, and I noticed that there's a, a white guy in line too uh, in front of me. Well, there are. Uh, Two representatives, two uh, com- customer service representatives for lg e that were sitting down waiting on people. So finally they called his number, and then they called my number at basically the same time. And so we sit down, uh, him in front of his and me beside him in front of my customer service rep. Uh, now, we both, uh, apparently our license has been cut off, and we got to see what can, we can do to get, get him to turn back on, Okay. And so, um, you know, I talked to the representative while he was talking to his representative. I told him, I said, look, I, I ain't got the money right now, but uh, I should be starting to work here in the next couple of days. And uh, in about two weeks, I can put some down on it. And um, uh, the week after that, I can go ahead and pay the remainder of the bill. And she said, well, Mr. Ivory, unfortunately, that's not the way it works. We're going to explore. It's because they have been turned off. In order to be turned on, we will not uh, give an extension, and we will not accept any type of partial payment, okay? They have to be paid in full. The bill has to be paid in full. I said, but I don't have any money, and I can't pay it in full. She said, well, Mr. Ivory, I don't know what to tell you. Either pay in full or your lights will stay off. Now, my representative told me that, and apparently the white man beside me, the representative told him the same thing. Now, we looked at each other after we was told that by our collective representatives, and we made eye contact. And we both mouthed the same thing. Man, this is some bull. Mm, mm, mm. But here it is. As we both got up at the same time, in his eyes and he looked in my eyes. Now <laughs> he he has to go home to his family, but he got to come back as a hero. Me. I got to go home to my family, but I got to come back as a hero. Now here's where the difference comes. We both have been through a similar situation and basically been told the same thing. Here comes the difference. See the white man, um, I can tell by looking at him that he had basically given up all hope. So the white man, I, I can tell you right now, he going home to his family with a gun in his hand. Probably going to shoot up everybody. All hope is gone. He feels like a loser. He feels like nothing. He's supposed to come back a hero. Now me, <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to come back a hero. But instead of a gun, I'm coming home with an arm full of candles, some matches, and I'm going to tell the kids, hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> every night is going to be camping night because we about to have candlelight dinners every night until we get these lights come on. Matter of fact, uh, here's some charcoal in the grill. Matter of fact, we having a barbecue for the next 40 days. See, that's the difference. This white man went home and did something bad to him and his family because he couldn't take it. Me, I went home with candles and a barbecue, grill and charcoal. That's where it's different. We face similar situations, but we react differently, y'all. See, Michael Jackson was right. It don't matter if you're black or white. With everything that's going on, y'all, all we should see is the content and character of each individual in front of us. No two white people are the same. No two African Americans are the same. No two Hispanics are the same. No two Asians. You get the picture. But one thing we can truly understand and need to know is that we were all created by the same God out of the same love. Now, before I leave you, I want to pray us out, especially a black and white prayer 
So I'm going to ask you that, uh, please, all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed unless, of course, you blind, and it really don't matter. I mean, seriously, for real, really. Wow. <laughs> oh, Lord. We thank you for another Sunday when nuts we drink. We thank you for another opportunity to come together in fun, faith, and fellowship. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for opening the door that no man can shut. But most of all, we thank you for loving us, being a lawyer in the courtroom, guilty, uh-uh, not guilty, a doctor in the sick room. Ding, stat. But most of all, we thank you for loving us more than we could ever love you or even ourselves. Lord, heal our land. There's so much wickedness in it. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to divide and conquer. But unite us through your son, Jesus Christ. For that is the only way we will stand. With the love of Christ. And even if we don't possess it, let us at least strive to attain it and possess it and then share it and show it to our fellow man. We love you, God. We give you honor, glory, and praise. Bless us and keep us in your perfect peace. Amen and amen. Now you all, I can't wait for next week, and I'm I'm telling you right now. When I see you next week, I'm telling you, you go. It's gonna be more of me. It's gonna be it's gonna be more of me. It's gonna be more Sunday with more nuts with more drinks. Cause I'm gonna eat me a little something and I'm gonna put on a little weight. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it because my love hurts. It's like a freight train; it'll run you over, smack dab, and leave you in the dust. It's pleasure and it's pain. You all take care. Have a blessed week and not a stressed week until we meet again. Good night. Yes, Lord. We need you. Hallelujah. They hate and they pour and they talk in. I won't fall back. I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. Searching for my purpose, okay. the preacher on fire, got me focused in the service. He said, bless is the man, I'm pressing through the fire. It seems I'm falling back, but I know I'm going higher. Favor don't look like favor, look like a dead end. You preaching today, sir, please say it again. Faith is what we hope for, speaking to existence. At times I feel lost, it's like I'm out of position. Then my mind start racing, thinking about David, and how he had one stone that dropped him to the pavement. Now I hear the words, how Joseph was a and even though he fell, his faith was still standing. I'm a tough enough and walk the miles that he chose. He's gonna throw me in the den, but your mouth will be closed. The word on fire, the anointing, I can hear it. I'm sitting in this role and I can feel his Holy Spirit. They hate and they pour and they talk in. I won't fall back, I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. Get me, cause the Lord already saved me. I'm clutching on this grace, embracing all that he gave me. At times I get weary, the storm means I'm tested. I ask to be purged, just in case I got infected. Before I came in, I was listening to church. He said, we got the victory, I'm healed from the hurt. I started feeling good, but would it last throughout the week? Pastor, I'm being real, it's the truth that I speak. I'm called to be chosen, I'm called to be great. But I'm wrapped up in this flesh, and my faith begins to break. Then I remember about James 1:12 and how we serve the one and his name never fails. I hear the altar call, yeah, he pulling on my soul. I'm feeling recharged, I was back on my pose. Was weak for a minute, but greater is he. Now I'm walking.
and it my purpose and it's favor on me. They hate and they pour and they talking, and I won't fall back, I still walk in. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. Hallelujah. They hate and they pour and they talking, and I won't fall back, I still walk in. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. Promise gonna keep on 